Jackson in a shotgun set. Takes the snap. He's back to throw. Under pressure. Hit by Thibodeau. Thibodeau. Ball comes loose. And the Giants scramble for it. It's still loose. And finally recovered by the Giants. At the 12-yard line. Kayvon Thibodeau gets his first career sack in big fashion. And that'll do it. The New York football Giants have improved to 5-1. and one. The final score, the Giants 24 and the Ravens 20. Let's go! We back! <laughs>Welcome to another edition of the Coach Table Show presented by Stop and Shop. I'm Bob Papa. Giants are in Jacksonville on Sunday. This past Sunday, the Giants knocked off the Ravens at MetLife Stadium. We're going to break it down with our building block segment. Carl Banks goes to the coach's tape to preview the Giants against the Jacksonville Jaguars and much more. With that said, I'd like to welcome him because I need to stop talking right now. My co-host, two-time Super Bowl champion Carl Banks and the head coach of the New York Giants, Brian Dable. Banksy, I'm going to let you take it from here because they don't like what they're hearing. Okay, now, so, Coach, big win, another big win, but the home crowd, it's starting to feel like a home. The fans seem to be really uh, into it when, when these games are happening at home. Yeah, we've been there for four times uh, in the regular season, and, and really all four times the crowd was fantastic. They're into it, uh, you know, creating false starts for the opposing offenses. It's loud all the way to the end, and we just uh, we really appreciate their support. Can you can you feel the difference from week one to where you are now in terms of the home games? Yeah, and absolutely. With the fans I mean, even, even from the, the drive in, uh, yeah, when they're tailgating, uh, they got here early, um, and I'd say you know from start to finish. Uh, they were into it, and that's the, the definition of a 12th man. Coach, yeah. three times this year you've come back from double-digit deficit to win a game, which ties the franchise record for double-digit comebacks in a season. What is it about this team's mentality that they don't lose focus? Yeah, we try to just focus on the next play, um, and that's, sometimes that's hard, but not worrying about the scoreboard or the situation that you're in. Just keep on playing, fight for 60 minutes. Once one play's over, go to the next play, stick together and try to play complimentary football all the way to the end. You've had to add a lot of new pieces to this team, bringing players in, but your draft class uh, certainly paid dividends in the game on Sunday. Contributions really across the board from each guy. What does that say about your staff? Because it's the assistant coaches, the position coaches that have to get these guys ready to play. Yeah, it's even even before the staff, our, our scouting department, Joe and, and the rest of the guys that, that work so hard during the year and go to these games and evaluate these players and then, you know, give us players to look at and then interview process. Everything goes into it, uh, making sure you're trying to select the right kind of people that, that fit what you're looking to do. And then the assistant coaches do a great job of, of helping develop those skill sets that, that the scouts saw. And again, it goes back to the players. They're, they're the right kind of people that work hard, that stay committed to, to how we prepare and the things we want to do. So it's a, it's a group effort. Coach, I commented to you during training camp that Wendell Robinson looks like a pro. He didn't look like a rookie, even in training camp, right? What about him that you say, okay, the moment's not too big for him. When did you guys really see that? Was it college or right after the draft? Yeah, I think, well, you know, once we started the evaluation process, I knew Joe liked him right from the get-go. Mm -hmm. um, he's like, hey, you got to take a look at this guy from Kentucky. He's explosive. He's got good quickness, makes a lot of good plays, competitive. Obviously, he had some visits and, and, mm -hmm. and went and saw him play. And then, you know, you get to talk to him and and Mike Groh did a good job on the Zoom calls and figuring out if he was, you know, what we were looking for in terms of the intelligent factor part of it. And, uh, you know, everything just checked the boxes as we, we got to the draft. And then when he got here, you know, the things that you thought you were, you know, evaluating were right on. And he's done a good job, obviously, fighting through that injury. But um, smart, tough, dependable, uh, has a good skill set, and he's a good young player to work with. Coach, um, final question for me, red zone efficiency. It's been a problem here for a number of years. You weren't here, so it's not your problem. But what are some of the keys to being good in the red zone consistently as you guys have been? Simple. It's, it's execution. You know, the, the field shrinks. Everybody knows that. You know, I think Kafka and the offensive staff do a good job of, of scheming things up down there. Uh, but at the end of the day, it comes down to the players executing it uh, in tight quarters. And you know, Daniel's done a good job there of making good decisions. Uh, we've been able to run the ball some. 
and you know all those things you know factor into some success in the in the red zone last one for me coach smart tough dependable right end of the game situation you practice situational football but then there's Saquon Barkley gets the ball could extend the score goes down how much did you guys talk about that on the sideline or was it just kind of a here, here are your reminders if certain things happen. Yeah, once we knew if we got the first down, we could seal the game. So that was communicated before the, the first play that he ran. And uh, he did a nice job of spinning out and, you know, getting the first down and going down, staying in bounds. It's something that we do um, as a team every Saturday and, and spend a lot of time on different situations that could come up. And like you said, you never know when they're going to come up. Mm -hmm. It might be not be until the 16th week of the season, but when they come up, you got to nail them. We're just getting started here on the program. A lot more to come. Looking back at the Giants' win against the Ravens and a preview of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Don't want to miss it here on the Coach Dable Show, presented by Stop and Shop. Welcome back to the Coach Dable Show. It's time to get smarter, Coach. Let's go through some of the plays that were basically turning point plays in the game. Sure. Uh, so this one, this first one's on offense. It's a, a third and 14, obviously not a favorable situation for us on offense. We don't want to be in too many of these. Uh, but I thought just a play that was well executed, allowed us to go down and get some points here on a big time conversion on third down, which is something that, you know, we've done a better job of here these last few weeks. So, you know, we shift over Richie. Um, there's not a lot of movement on the defense. So usually you're getting some type of zone anyways in this situation. Uh, they're disguising a little bit. They roll back to a split safety look. We got Richie on a little hook route over the ball, which takes really these three guys and, and Daniel's feeling this player right here. Mm -hmm. And as he feels him squeeze, Slayton's going to get in this window between the corner and this hook player right here, right at the sticks. Um, and obviously the play is, is not going to be able to get executed if you don't have good pocket pressure, which, you know, we got a double team here on this guy. Bellinger's helping out on, on the left side. we got a clean pocket for Daniel to step up in. It takes a couple hitches, throws it on time. All the receivers are in the, in the right spot, and that uh, was a big-time conversion. Good awareness by Slayton there to make sure he's past the sticks a couple yards so he can come back to the ball. And uh, I'd say a big time conversion for us on a, on a third and long play. So when you talk about the awareness, stick awareness, obviously you know where it is, but is it a thing where your receivers have to get past that in case they have to come back? Yeah, particularly on a play like this where we're running a, a deeper curl route. Again, if you see it from the back end, you know it wouldn't it wouldn't take place without the protection. So we got we got a couple extra player, players in for protection. You know Saquon runs over and, and gets JPP with a chip. Bellinger comes down here on a late game and, and helps inside on 99. Uh, so again, a clean pocket. We got double team, double team, really double team over here. And, and you can see Daniel's eyes are down the field right now as Richie comes around. So as he's coming down in his eyes, it's just a little thing, but it makes a big difference. You can feel six start to squeeze just a little mm -hmm. bit. So, you know, Daniel's eye discipline and, and what he sees and, and how he's controlling the zone defenders is, is really important for this play, the well-executed play. Okay, now here's another one, uh, second and 10. Yeah. Let's go through this one. Yeah, second and 10 in the fourth quarter. So, you know, we're playing man-to-man -man coverage here. So, you know, we're isolated up top, isolated here, we're isolated here. You know, and, and here's number 89, who, who really had a good day against us. But in this particular case, I thought it was a really good call by Wink, a little bit of a change up. You know, the post safety is kind of cheating to this hash in case they want to go and then throw that inside fade. And, and we're doubling Andrews. So, you know, we have this kind of taken care of. We, you know, in essence, we have some type of a double over here, if you will. And everybody else is man to man. You know, we're getting pushed from, from Leo and Dex inside. And Tay's hugging up on the running back. He stays in, so he, he's not out at this particular time. And then we got the edge rush, you know, by Kayvon and by the Fox. Fox does a great job of pushing the tackle back. You know, he just he holds it for a second. And then Kayvon just has a really good feel. The quarterback's got the ball in one hand. He swipes at it. And then does a good job of, of really not allowing Lamar to get back on the ball. And everybody else, it's a race to the ball. And I think, you know, 
what a really good recovery by Leo. He doesn't try to scoop in and score. He understands the situation of the game. He cradles the football, you know, makes sure we get possession of it, which was then, you know, we ran the clock out there with, with Saquon on the first down. Now, Coach, when we take another look at this, the anatomy of a pass rush versus a uh, escape artist like Lamar Jackson, it's, it's you got to push inside and outside, correct? Exactly right. And, you know, you try to keep them in a well here. And, and Fox just does a great job, you know, and he's been coming along of, of his power rush, his two-hand power rush, but, but keeping enough contain right here on the edge that just doesn't let him get out. Mm -hmm. And then we wrap him around the edge, does a really good job of getting thin, using his hands. And then these two big guys inside of just pushing the pocket on him. You know, so we really got him kind of caved in here, which, you know, he's an unbelievable escape artist, but, you know, Kayvon does a great job right here of recognizing the balls in one hand, you know, in a critical juncture of the game, getting it out, and then a great hustle by Fox, and really a, just a smart awareness play by Leo of not trying to do too much with the football, understanding we, where we are in the game. Our next play here, Coach, is big contribution by the special teams. Get the Giants back in the game. It's a 7-0 lead, but to keep the game close, this was something that really tilted the field. Yeah, you know, I thought our special teams had a really good game this game. Duvernay is an outstanding returner, and, and you know, between kicking the ball deep and our gunners uh, with Lane and McLeod, they just did a really good mm -hmm. job of, of getting down the field and eliminating any return yardage, and that's been big for, for the Ravens. So it was a point of emphasis all week. And then obviously the return game, being physical here, you know, this is the one opportunity we had to return it. And I think the frontline players, you know, these two double teams really get the play started by being physical and attacking, you know, these guys coming down on, the, on kickoff. We get a hat for a hat everywhere else. You know, this is a safety. He's a free blocker. And Gary just does a good job of pressing the ball and then cutting it. Two good blocks right here, you know, by our starting receiver and, and by Bellinger just to get the play going. And then Gary does a great job in the open field. We got a lot of hustle down there. You know, it was a big time play for us to get the ball in good field position. You know, that was an area that, that we wanted to, to win this particular week. You want to win it every week. But, you know, between the turnovers on defense, this big return, there was a 20-yard difference in, in starting field position for this game. And, Coach, you know, you, when you see a return like this, first thing you look for are flags. That's exactly but right. But when you said that the thing that got this started was the double teams up front. So there are not a lot of guys leaking through where guys will have to hold them to, to prevent them from getting to the returner here. So that front line is very important in terms of preventing those type of penalties on a big, exactly a big right. uh, return, right? Trying to move our feet, you know, keep our hands inside the best we can. And again, this is obviously a tough play always for the return team. These guys are coming full head of steam. But just getting a hat for a hat, you know, there's Bellinger and there's Myrick. There's Johnson, you know, Cam, you know, these singled up blocks, playing physical, getting a hat for a hat. Brightwell does a great job of setting up these blocks and then hitting it out in that open gap. And, and we turn the safety, obviously, free. You don't block them all. Um, this is his, his guy to make sure that he blocks uh, by running well with the football. Mm -hmm. We talk about the Brian Dable profile of Giants football right now. It's, hey, let's hang in there. Let's let's keep it close, and we'll find a way to win the football game. This was great stuff, Coach. Thanks, Carl. Appreciate it. We're all smarter, and we'll be back with more of the Coach Dable Show. You're a five-star recruit, right? But you've always had success. Five games into it, you ain't got a sack. How do you handle that when immediate success doesn't come? You gotta be able to deal with that and keep grinding. At the end of the day, I just gotta keep going forward, right? There ain't no looking back. We, you got a rear view mirror this big and you got a windshield as big as can be. Why? Because everything behind you leave it in the past. So if, I, if, if I'm five weeks in and I ain't got a sack, we're gonna figure out how next week we're gonna take advantage of whoever we play and we're gonna get three sacks. Jackson takes the snap, he's back to throw. Under pressure, hit by Thibodeau, ball comes loose, and the Giants scramble for it. It's still loose, and finally recovered by the Giants. At the 12-yard line, Kayvon Thibodeau gets his first career sack in big fashion. Boy, that's a closing play there. That's how you do it. Hey, my mama. Hey, we come from the West Coast, we go to the East Coast, and we suck this in. Hey, that's it. 
Pretty prophetic stuff, Carl, as Kayvon Thibodeau gets his first career sack as we welcome you back to the Coach Table Show presented by Stop and Shop. But really, that's why they do those combine in interviews, don't they? Yeah, I mean, listen, you want to find out as much about a guy as possible pre-draft. And then here he is. He says, if you're five games in, don't have a sack, what's going on? I'm going to keep grinding. And sure enough, he makes one in the biggest moment and to date the biggest game of his young career. It says a lot about a guy because he could have given the first round draft pick answer of yeah. it won't be five weeks before I get my first sack. Right. But this is the NFL. And obviously Thibodeau came through big. All right, time for this week's edition of Head to Head. Here's Paul Dottino and Sean O'Hara. So now it's time to go head to head with the Giants and the Jacksonville Jaguars and some of the key matchups you'll be watching for in this game. Now, first up, Sean, we're looking at Darnay Holmes against slot receiver Christian Kirk. Kirk is very nifty. He's very quick. And Holmes knows it's going to be a busy day. I would say they're definitely new to his skill set uh, since Texas A&M. He's been a guy who's been shifty. Uh, option guy right on a guy who could take the top off. So I feel like they're definitely utilizing him to his strength. So I'm definitely excited for the matchup. Over the last few weeks, it doesn't look like he's gotten as many targets as he did in the first few weeks of the season. And they've been struggling a little bit. So would you expect they're going to try to start feeding him again this week? Or do you see teams playing him differently that they can't get the ball to him? Yeah, I'll say that's some insightful information. Uh, I definitely didn't know that he had a lack of targets. So that pretty much makes it... Uh, I wouldn't say a force, but definitely something that they're going to want to get him the ball more. You know, that's just how offenses work and operate. So uh, we just waiting for the opportunity, ready for the uh, – I'm ready for the matchup. And if they get more targets for him, that's better for me. Week in and week out, Darnay Holmes gets the team's best weapons, and no doubt he's got another task ahead of himself. Christian Kirk, an interesting little study on him for this season. He started out on fire, 18 catches throughout the first three games, and in the last three games combined, he's only got seven catches. So things have kind of fizzled out a little bit for him, but no doubt he represents a great matchup for Darnay. Obviously, when you're in the slot, you've got to handle the two-way go. And, and I think one of the things that they've done a great job of is bringing some pressure uh, in different packages to help Darnay so that now he can just kind of defend half of that field when he's in the slot. But I, I, I really think this is a great matchup in Darnay's favor. I, I think when you have a, a quarterback in Christian Kirk who's still working on the relationship with the young quarterback in Trevor Lawrence, they haven't been together for very long, so there's still some opportunities for him to maybe jump a couple routes, maybe kind of read a couple things, and hopefully get a couple of turnovers. Sean, one of the things I like about Holmes, he has only one missed tackle this year. Now that can come into play not only against a nifty guy like Kirk, but also in run support because Etienne and Robinson, each of them have over 300 yards rushing this year, making them the only pair of teammates in the NFL that have done so. Yeah, Jacksonville coming off of a big game, even though they lost, they had 243 yards rushing uh, last week. So that's going to be a big part of the game as well. First and second down, you got to make sure you tackle the ball carriers, the running backs specifically. And then on third down, get off the field. Um, I know Darnay is studying film. I know he's becoming a student of the game. It's certainly helping with some of the veterans he has around him. Okay, Sean, let's see. Our next up is Andrew Thomas against Josh Allen. Thomas at left tackle does have only one penalty this year, but you can appreciate this. It was for legal formation. It wasn't a hold. I'll it wasn't it. a full start. Yeah. All right, that's good stuff. And I will say this. Josh Allen, though, is the kind of guy who can get you a little bit shaky sometimes. Um, that's just the beauty of the NFL. Every week um, you're going to get some of the most talented um, physically guys you know, in the country. Um, obviously, he, he can bend really well to be that size, and, and not just him. I mean, their whole front is is talented. They got you know the kid out of Georgia, Trayvon. You know, I played with him. You know, when he was a, a freshman and a sophomore there. But they're all talented, really explosive. So you got to be ready. It doesn't look like they do a lot of blitzing. They rely on those guys to get it done on their own. How does that change your outlook in terms of dealing with them? Um, you're not going to be surprised. You know, you know what's coming, and it's just mano y mano who's going to win the battle, and that's that's kind of how we like it. Andrew Thomas has already put together a Pro Bowl type performance this year. I mentioned it earlier on this season that I saw him in training camp. I thought this was going to be his best year ever. His balance, his punch, his athleticism, it's showing up big time. But he's going to be tested. Josh Allen, as you mentioned, Paul, uh, he has really been their most disruptive defensive player. You see right down here the stats. Three sacks, two forced fumbles. All right, that's on the quarterback. Five tackles for a loss. And I'll add to this, he's got ten quarterback hits. So while it may not be registering as a sack, he's absolutely getting to the quarterback, disrupting 
disrupting the passing game. And that's something that Andrew Thomas has been phenomenal at this season. He's taken on some of the best passers in the league, and he has shut them down. I think he's become the leader of this offense up front. And I know he looks at challenges like this. He takes it personally. He's very professional. He's always studying film. And I think the biggest thing with Andrew Thomas is he's playing with a little bit of a, a little bit of an edge. You kind of see him finishing blocks now. He's playing very physical. And I tell you what, his his sets right now look so graceful. They look so confident. And that's such a big part of the game when you're playing left tackle. You know, you mentioned quarterback hit, Sean. He had four in one game against the L.A. Chargers back in week number three. That'll do it for this edition of Head to Head. Now let's go back to Bob. Carl, the Jaguars could get after the quarterback. Daniel Jones was sacked a couple times last week. I guess every week it comes down to this Giants offensive sure. line, doesn't it? It does. And listen, when you are facing a stacked box all the time, teams, when they put a lot of guys in there to stop the run, they can also give you more to worry about in a pass rush also. But, you know, these two uh, tackles that the Giants have have been getting better each and every week. Rookie Evan Neal has been improving, and Andrew Thomas has been nothing less than impressive. Yeah, and you heard the guys talk about Christian Kirk. Carl will take a look at Christian Kirk on the deep ball in strategy a little bit later on in the show. We're going to take a timeout when we come back. Over, under, and much more here on the Coach Table Show presented by Stop and Shop. Welcome back to the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop. It's the Giants and Jaguars on Sunday in Jacksonville. Well, Wink Martindale in his first year as defensive coordinator got some sweet revenge against his former squad, Baltimore, last week. Sean O'Hara had a little ride along with the Giants defensive coordinator. All right, let's buckle up, right? Yeah, let's do her buckle up. We like safeties around here, don't we? Yes, we do. The ones that are fast and can cover. <laughs> Blitz. That's right. All right, Wink. Man, what a great start to the season, huh? This yeah. Has been, uh, it's been fun to watch you guys. Well, it's, it's been a lot of fun since we've been here. I think that, uh, you know, the culture that, that Dave's and Joe has established here, it, it makes it fun coming to work every single day. And we got a bunch of guys defensively that, you know, we all check our ego at the door and we just go to work and it's, we got a great group of guys. When you came here to the Giants and you knew, all right, I got to establish a new culture and this is going to be our new identity as a defense, like what's like the first thing that you have to make sure that you accomplish? Well, I, I think that uh, the first thing you have to accomplish is your communication with the players you know, just a, an open mic, if you will, in the meeting rooms and everything else. Oh, that's over. I was yeah, trying to talk that. That's me. I'm thirsty. I told him. Hey, go to, hey, go down. Stop. Hey, what happens when you, it don't matter when we go out there? Just stand up. We'll make the play. They understand they don't have to just sit there and listen, like in some rooms. So, you know, I, I think that when, when you uh, start building relationships with, with the players, it's a lot easier to communicate, and it's worked really well for us so far you know for us to uh, react the way we did playing both you know against Green Bay and with Aaron Rodgers and Baltimore with Lamar Jackson I, I couldn't be more proud of these guys yeah I mean you took down the reigning MVP and Aaron Rodgers two-time MVP uh -huh. in London and then Lamar he was an MVP in 19 years ago yep. with him yep let's talk about Xavier McKinney uh, obviously you know, a big deal was made about him getting the green dot. Right. That's the guy that you're talking to. What is it about Xavier that made you confident that he could handle all that at such a young part in his career? Well, I, I think that uh, the biggest thing is to me, when I first met him, and there's a lot of players like this on this team, but he is a football junkie. He, he can't get enough of it. Fourth and two for Green Bay at the Giants' seven-yard line. Rodgers takes the snap, back, fires it, pass, batted by the Giants, incomplete! The Giants sent the blitz, and they batted it away! His personality and his composure is what stood out to me. Both he and Julian, you know, Julian wears one, the green dot as well in, in practice and things like that, and it's, it's really helped our secondary in their communications and, and our whole defense is taking pride in it. 
Let's talk about some of the big guys up front. Dexter Lawrence is having a phenomenal season, and you've been around some of the some really good interior players throughout your career. Uh, what, what has surprised you about Dexter, and, and what impresses you the most about his game right now? I, I I had high expectations from him just watching tape from last year. I told he both he and Leo, if you're not Pro Bowlers, we got a problem because I, I think they have that kind of ability. Empty set, Rodgers in a shotgun. Rodgers takes the snap, looking to run, and Rodgers gets sacked back at the 44-yard line by Dexter Lawrence. Hey, hold up, 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 and, and his length he can use as a weapon, and he has been, and that's what's made him so effective in rushing the passer and in playing the run game. Who were some of your biggest influences throughout your coaching career that, that you, know, you kind of maybe took some things to, with you and you said, hey, look, I like that aspect of it. I like that style. I, I like some of those uh, concepts. Who did you really pilfer things from? You know, in high school, I, my high school coach, Ed Domsites, who's still coaching high school football back in Ohio, um, I saw the way he treated people, and not just not just people, but the players, his players, and the respect that he earned from, he respected everybody else. My initial thoughts were, I want to grow up and be like him, you know? But, uh, you know, I, I just, I'm always looking, and that's why I, I love working here so much for the Giants, because, I, I think Dave's is wise beyond his years. When I came here and when he and I finally got to sit down and really talk football, I just knew it was a good match. I, I, won, I wanted this job. That's the easiest way to say it. Because, yeah. because of him, because uh, of Joe's vision and, and you know, the New York Giants. I mean, it's... Yeah. Well, Wink, I appreciate the time, man. Thank uh, you, Sean. It's always a pleasure to talk ball with you. And uh, I know the Giants are, are extremely... Uh, ecstatic to have you here uh, on staff, and I know the players love playing for you. Well, thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks a lot, sir. man. I appreciate the time. Carl, one of the things about Wink is he keeps it real, doesn't he? Yeah, he's an open book, and he's he's uh, he's blunt force trauma, if you will, and in terms of how he relates to his players, he's right at, right there telling them like. And I is. know you enjoy spending some time with him. I do. Away I, from the facility. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 a lot of fun hanging out when you get a chance to run into Coach. And, you know, he's the same guy every time you meet him. Time for this week's edition of Over Under with Madeline Burke. She's joined by Imani Toomer and Sean O'Hara. Time now for a little Week 7 Over Under. It's game time. Let's jump right into it, fellas. Sean, I'm going to start with you here. Over under three and a half touchdowns scored by the Giants in Jacksonville on Sunday. Yeah, I'm going to take the over on this one, Matt. I think touchdowns kind of come in bunches, and we just saw Daniel Jones throw for two red zone touchdowns. Um, I, I think he's he's broken the offense wide open now with Wondell Robinson coming back healthy now. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go with the over on three and a half. I think Saquon is going to get a couple in on the ground as well. I think this wide receiving core is coming around. They're starting to make big plays. Wondell Robinson had his first touchdown last week. Uh, I think it's going to open it up for Saquon and the running backs. I'm going to go with the over as well. I think they're going to have more than uh, three and a half. All right, I'm going to be the contrarian and take the under here just because the Jags defense is allowing an average of 19 points per game. Uh, we've seen the Giants getting into that touchdown rhythm, but I think three is a sweet spot for me on this one, so I'm going under. Over under 12 wins to win the NFC East. I'm going to go over because, okay. you know, there's 11 games left. I think it's going to be a, a round 14 to win. Yeah, Amani, I'm with you. I'm going to take the over on this as well. The chase is on. Everybody's chasing the birds right now. And as you mentioned, with 11 games left, absolutely. You look at their schedule, the Eagles, they only play, they have one team remaining on the schedule outside of the division with a winning record. So they've got a pretty easy path. I, I think you're going to need 13 wins to try to win this division and get the T-shirt and the hat. Yeah, got to get that T-shirt and the hat. The swag <laughs> is all we play for, really. Um, but I'm going to take the over as well, right? The Eagles are already halfway to 12, and there's 11 games left. It's the 17-game season. I'm taking the over. All right, Sean, over under 125 rushing yards allowed by the Giants defense. Yeah, it was a tough day uh, for the run defense against Baltimore last week, and I think anytime you have something like that happen as a defense, you, you kind of cl clamp down on it. That becomes your focus. So I'm going to take the under on this. I, I think that the whole uh, you know, objective all week long is stop the run. Let's force Trevor Lawrence to throw the football uh, and hope that he coughs it up. So I'll take the under. 
I mean, they don't have to worry about a running quarterback like they did last week. Uh, I think that it's going to be the under be just because, you know, I, I think conventionally it's easier to stop the run when you don't have that running quarterback. And I think that's going to be the X factor. I agree with you there. The running quarterback adds an element to it and they don't have that this week. I'm going to take the under as well. Jags averaging 136 rush yards per game. I think the Giants will get them on that low end. Absolutely. Under 125. Let's go. Um, finally, <laughs> Amani over under two and a half takeaways by the Giants defense. Well, they had two. They had their first interception last week, uh, two turnovers that ended up finishing out the game. Just like touchdowns come in bunches, so do turnovers. I'm going to go with the over this week. Uh, I think this defense is coming into its own, getting confidence. They're really starting to understand Wink Martindale's system, and I, I believe in this defense. Yeah, I'm going to take the over on this one, too. We saw some edge pressure. Kayvon Thibodeau got home, found a way to sneak his hand in there. The Giants even dropped an interception um, in the end zone as well. So um, I'll take the over on this. Uh, Trevor Lawrence is still a young quarterback. He's still learning some things. He can get fooled by some blitz packages and some coverages. So uh, I think Wink's got a couple more tricks up his sleeve. I'm going to agree and take the over as well. The Jaguars have nine turnovers so far this season, but they had five against the Eagles in week four. As another NFC East team, I think the Giants are going to really send it and uh, enforce the turnover as well. So look at us, all in agreement on the over there. Giants, Jaguars, Sunday in Jacksonville. But we've got a lot more to come. Stay tuned for more Coach Dable Show after this quick timeout. Welcome back to the Coach Table Show presented by Stop and Shop. It's the Giants and Jaguars in Jacksonville on Sunday. Time for strategy with Carl Banks. And Carl, the Jaguars are a better team than their 2-4 and four record. They got a lot of talented players across the board. You know, Bob, the record is not indicative of the talent level. They have lots of young talent. They had the first pick in the draft last year. They had the top pick at quarterback the year before. And here you'll see why Trevor Lawrence is a top pick. Just a little waggle motion, but he drives the ball down the field, and that's about a 45-yard throw in the air. But he is he's really adept at getting the ball and driving it downfield, but he is also a mobile quarterback, and you'll take a look here where he goes through his progressions, things break down for him. He's looking across, going through his progressions. Now on the move, he throws it across his body, on a spiral right into the end zone. So he is as good as advertised. Yeah, and last week at the last second loss at Indianapolis, he threw for a touchdown. He was 20 of 22, and he ran for two touchdowns. So he can also put the ball in the end zone that way. Now let's take a look at what they do on defense. Well, what they do on defense, Bob, they've got top pick in last year's draft, Trayvon Walker. He's got a lot of length, a lot of speed, and plays with leverage for a guy as tall as he is. And here you'll see he just uses that length, slaps the arm down, and he leans. He's right at the quarterback in two steps. So once he gets by you, that long body just gets to, to the quarterback. Now, let's take a look here. This is the most impressive part about this young man because he's going against Lane Johnson, who's an all-pro right tackle. Now, let's just take a look at what he does and the leverage that he plays with. Now, Johnson is no pushover, literally tosses him aside. I mean, he's got those long arms. Johnson's trying to get engaged into his body. And you'll see, he just gets those arms out there. He extends, sets the edge, and just discharges him like he's just a, a rookie offensive lineman. That's very impressive for a young outside linebacker defensive end. Now, here's one more, Bob. We just want to take a look at, because he's such an all-around player, here he is in pass coverage. Just sets, boom, makes a play. So he's, a, he's an all-around player, and he's complete. Yeah, and then you see number 41 there, another high draft pick, Josh Allen, on the other side mm -hmm. of the ball. So they got some talented players playing on the edge in Jacksonville. Strategy with Carl Banks is brought to you by PSENG providing safe, reliable energy now and in the future. My voice could use a boost when we come back above the numbers here on The Coach Dable Show, presented by Stop and Shop. Welcome back to The Coach Dable Show, presented by Stop and Shop. The 5-1 and one Giants in Jacksonville to take on the Jaguars on Sunday. Time for this week's edition of Above the Numbers with Paul Dottino and Monty Toomer. Okay, so now it's time to go above the numbers for the Giants and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Amani, who's up first? 
I got Wandale Robinson. I feel like he is a young guy, got a great opportunity last week, hasn't played football that much because of his injuries, but now got an opportunity last week, scored a touchdown. This is one of the most important stats. This wide receiving core needs to put more points on the board, take some pressure off Saquon Barkley, and give some targets to Daniel Jones, who's been playing very solid football this year. Robinson's already been very clutch. You know, he's only played in two games for the Giants. But all four of his catches have either gone for a first down or a touchdown. Only had 15 snaps against Baltimore. He was on a snap count, Amani. I do expect him to play more this weekend. And by the way, Jacksonville's given up six and a half yards after the catch. Fourth highest in the National Football League. Absolutely. All right. I got somebody, but he's on defense. And it's Kayvon Thibodeau. Now, folks, you know he had his first sack last week against the Ravens. It was a strip sack. Awesome. 11 tackles on the season. But here's the thing for me. After coming off that sprained knee, he's played two straight games of more than 80% of the snaps. So he is rounding into form. The grease is on the wheels, so to speak. Robinson, the left tackle, Taylor, the right tackle on the Jaguars, have given up two sacks apiece. And twice this year, the Jaguars have given up four sacks in a game. This not, is going to be a big one. Not a bad time to get your first sack against, uh, you know, against the Ravens. Also, they finished out the game. All right, let's go below the numbers. And for Jacksonville, Amani, they want to shut down Evan Ingram. He looks familiar. We I know this so. guy. Don't we know him? Evan Ingram, of course, drafted by the Giants. We know what kind of talent he is. Now he's starting to kind of round out into form. So he's having a good season so far. Hopefully, he plays below the numbers. The Giants go ahead down to Jacksonville on the road and get another victory. You know, so far this year, he's got 24 catches, so he's on pace for over 80, which would be a career high for him. And obviously, it's his first year in Jacksonville. Giant safeties, McKinney and Love, they know a lot about him. We'll see if that can be to the Giants' advantage or to Evan Ingram's a advantage. Little inside cooking, huh? <laughs> well, that'll do for Above the Numbers this week. Carl, we saw it last week. Thibodeau gets the game ceiling sack. Mondale Robinson, a touchdown catch. Daniel Bellinger, a touchdown catch. The Giants need rookies to play a big role. I didn't even mention Evan Neal. Well, the reason they need rookies to, to play a big role is it's reminiscent to when I came to the Giants and it was a rebuild, Bob. It wasn't a reconstruction. It was a rebuild. And you need your young talent to make contributions so that you can build on that the following year. So. This is exactly why they were drafted. They did the homework, and they said these are guys that have to play now, and they have to be NFL ready. And I got to mention Dane Belton and Micah McFadden, yeah. too, guys that have contributed so far this season. We're going to take a timeout. When we come back, Coach Dable rejoins us to look ahead to the Jaguars here on the Coach Dable Show, presented by Stop and Shop. I think we we do have a tough group. I think regardless of ha- what happens, regardless of the situation, you know, you've got to be tough enough mentally and physically to compete for the whole game. Takes the snap, back to throw, fires it left, completes it to Robinson in for the touchdown! I think he's a really good quarterback. Um, he has a really good arm. You know, it's going to be challenging for us yeah. as a defense. We just got to go out to execute. He's under pressure. He's back at the 20. Side on to the intercepted. Picked off by Julian Love. And Julian Love gets the Giants' first interception of the season. Welcome back to the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop. It's the Giants and Jaguars in Jacksonville on Sunday. And, Coach, you take a look at the Jaguars. Their record says 2-4. and four. But if you watch the games, they can easily be four and two or even better. Doug Peterson's brought a lot to that football team. Just talk about what Peterson brings to the table and what you've seen so far from Jacksonville. Yeah, they're aggressive on defense. They do a good job of stopping the run. On offense, they, they have a lot of talented players, starting with the quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, uh, a player that I recruited back in the day when I was at Alabama out of Cottersville, Georgia. Uh, I think he's just got a very, very bright future in this league. He's very talented spreads the ball around and they got some explosive runners uh, you know, where they can create some big plays fast on you. ATN and Robinson are very explosive. Coach, so you've got some young players that you guys have had to evaluate too. Their first round draft choice, um, Walker is a guy that was in consideration for a lot of teams. He went in the top of the draft. Does that help give some insight into how you guys want to prepare for him? Yeah, I think you got to see what he did at Georgia, but now it's really what has he done for Jacksonville and uh, very talented players, explosive, got some quickness, good length. He's tough. Uh, 
he's a really good football player. Coach, um, they've been able to turn opponents over. They have seven interceptions this season, 10 sacks as a football team. But kind of does circle back to you, doesn't it, and, and your team and taking care of your own business for things to unfold to negate whatever their strengths are, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Each week you have some, you know, points that you try to hit against the teams you're playing. And, you know, it always starts with your football team and the things that you have to do and respect your opponent. They're, they're obviously a very good team on, on really all three phases of the game. So we'll have our work cut out for us. You know, you got to go on the road. You were in London just a couple of weeks ago, but a lot of the games have been at home. Just talk about some of the things you try to instill upon your team when playing on the road. Yeah, really focus on what we can control. Uh, usually when you go on the road, you're, you're in front of a, a bunch of people that are going to boo you quite a bit, and you got to stick together as a football team and, and focus on the things you need to do, which is really going out there and executing each play. I want to talk about Trevor Lawrence since you did recruit him. And Carl talked about this um, in the strategy segment. He had two rushing touchdowns last week to go along with a passing touchdown. Talk about his athleticism because you don't think of him as a runner but he has enough athleticism to keep a play alive. Yeah, very talented. Uh, he passes the ball well, he can run, he's athletic. Uh, they use him on some zone reads and they also use him on just some straight quarterback runs. Uh, so it, it, it evens the playing field out when you're playing against a, a quarterback that can do that. You know, it's 11 on 11 football. Why did he go with you at Alabama? I'm not a great recruiter. <laughs> <laughs> well, Coach, we appreciate a couple minutes as always. Uh, look forward to the game in Jacksonville, and we'll do it again next week. Thanks, got it. Coach. Thanks, guys. As New York Giants head coach Brian Dable, that wraps it up for this week's show. This week's matchup is presented by Weeble, partner of the New York Football Giants. And make sure you check out Giants Post Game Live right after the Giants and the Jacksonville Jaguars on MSG. So for Carl Banks, Coach Dable, our entire crew, and my lousy voice. I'm Bob Papa. Thanks for watching the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop.